Okay, hello everybody. You're all very welcome to our webinar here tonight on the Young Farmer Scheme um, and how it, you can achieve successful application um, to the scheme and beyond. Um, I'm joined here this evening uh, by some colleagues from the department. Uh, my name is Fran Moran. I uh, look after the area of the department that handles the Young Farmer Scheme, National Reserve, all things payment entitlements and so on. I'm joined here by colleagues who will talk you through both um, the application process and also the checks that we carry out on farm as part of the, uh, the normal control mechanisms that we have on all our schemes. So just to, to go a little bit on the format of the evening that we'll have here. Um, so we'll start and we'll have some presentations first. We'll have uh, my colleague Eddie Ford will take you through the administration process. So what happens when you first apply to the scheme, the kind of information that you need and so on. After that then, we will move on and Raymond Bork will talk you through some of the requirements that you need to have on farm. The things that an inspector will look for when they come out to inspect if you, if you are chosen for inspection and the kind of things that you need to make sure that you have in place so that you're successful and that you pass through the scheme successfully um, through the course. After that, we will have a session for questions and answers. So down on in the dock for the webinar software, down along there, you'll see a little box for questions. So you can pop your questions into that box. And what we'll do is we'll group, group them together and we'll answer them then at that part. I'd expect the whole um, webinar here this evening to take about an hour, an hour, an hour and a quarter, there or thereabouts. We'll try not to run on longer than the scheduled time of nine o'clock anyway, if we are here that long. So um, without further ado, I might hand over then to Eddie, uh, if you're ready to change Eddie uh, and, and start in, if that's okay. and. Um, I'll, I'll let you take over. Okay, thank you, Fran. Um, I hope you can all see my screen um, the, with the, the slides we have for you. Uh, my name is Eddie Ford, and I'm going to take you through the desk-based administrative checks that are carried out on Young Farmer Scheme applications. So. These are the checks that we carry out on all the applications to ensure compliance with the, the basic requirements of the scheme. And once these checks have been com uh, completed, we then have an eligible population of applicants from which our colleagues on the inspection side, uh, they can make their selection of the cases that will be subject to on-farm checks. And over the last couple of years, that has been 10% of the eligible population. So we're talking in excess of 500 uh, cases selected for on-farm checks. So at the on the the administrative check side of things, so they're desk-based. Uh, they're carried out based on the information held by the department and the supporting documents that have been submitted by the applicants uh, at the time of application. So, for example, we have the date of birth. So far. An individual applicant, uh, we will check against the records that are held in, in the department. Uh, this is to ensure compliance with the eligibility requirement for the applicant to be under 40 in the year of, of first submission of an application. We will then check the commencement date of agricultural activity. Again, that is to ensure uh, compliance with the terms and conditions uh, with regard to commencement dates. We will also then check the educational qualification and the evidence, the cert uh, or, of the show the educational qualification is uploaded by the applicant as part of the application. We check that against the approved list. And we would also check to ensure that the course has been completed by the closing date for submission of applications, which is one of our requirements. Then we would also check within the department systems that we have to ensure that the BPS application has been submitted for the year of application. Uh, and that's again so checked against the records that we would hold. 
And then we would also check on the entitlements uh, that are held by the uh, individual applicant because the Young Farmer Scheme is paid based on the number of entitlements activated in the scheme year. That changes from 2023, but we can maybe touch on that in a little more detail later on. There are some additional administrative checks required where the young farmer is part of a group. So uh, by group, we mean uh, this would be you know, a, a joint herd number, uh, a company, or uh, a farm partnership. So you know this is the uh, this is the additional checks that we we would carry out there. So the first check is to ensure that the young farmer's name is on the herd number that has been used uh, to submit the application. Uh, there's also a young farmer's declaration form that needs to be completed and signed by all members of the group. Uh, that declaration states that the young farmer exercises effective and long-term control within the group. In terms of the decisions and the financial uh, and managerial control, that declaration must be signed and uh, stamped by a solicitor. Uh, we also then check that the young farmer is named on the bank account uh, into which the basic payment scheme and young farmer scheme payments are made. And we carry out a cross check there with the records held by our colleagues in the accounts section, uh, which is based in, in Cavan. Uh, we also then, within the uh, group situation, we require the birth certificate to be submitted in respect of the young farmer. So we will do a cross check on that again, ensuring compliance with the requirement to under 40 in the first year of application under the scheme. And then finally, for applications where uh, it's a company it is the entity uh, that is submitting the application, we will look at the company registration office records. Uh, they're examined to ensure that the young farmer is a director and a minimum 20% shareholder within the company, uh, because that is the requirements where the young farmer operates within a company setting. Just a couple of issues that maybe should just be aware of, uh, where there are changes to the farming entities, uh, such as an individual applicant joining a, a registered farm partnership or a change of directors in the company. These changes should be notified to the department um, in case there is a requirement for an additional application to be made. So section 1.2 of the scheme terms and conditions sets out some more detail in relation to that, but it's something that perhaps uh, you may take note of. And also, while an eligible successful applicant in one year uh, can apply for continued participation in the scheme in the following year by using the tick box on the, on the BPS application, uh, that will be a BIS application from 2023 on. Where there's been a change to the registration details of the herd number since the previous year's application, that tick box uh, won't be available. So the application must be submitted uh, through the online uh, Young Farmer Scheme application facility on INET. Uh, if the tick box is not available for any reason, and the applicant is eligible to apply for the following year, uh, they must submit the online application using that YFS uh, ap application facility. And then just to mention that with effect from 2020, so for the last uh, three years of operation of the scheme, uh, the information note that you see on screen there, it appears as part of all the online Young Farmer Scheme applications, whether that is an application uh, submitted by ticking the box on the BPS application, or whether it's using the Young Farmer Scheme separate online application facility. Uh, the purpose of this information notice really is to advise applicants of the on-farm inspection checks that take place and the requirement to demonstrate financial and managerial control of the holding as outlined in it's section 1.6 of the scheme terms and conditions. So that has been introduced just to flag for people at the time of application that they really should be familiarizing themselves with the requirements in terms of demonstrating financial and managerial control. So I have just included some contact details here. If any of you have any 
any queries on the administrative checks that are carried out under uh, the Young Farmer Scheme that I've, I've outlined in these slides. So that concludes the, the run through in the administrative checks. And I'll now hand you over to Ray, uh, who is going to present the next, uh, the next section. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eddie. So while we're getting Ray set up, just um, uh, again, just to, to mention to you that we have that questions facility in the software. You'll see it down in, as part of the, the doc, if you like, that uh, is part of the software that you're watching us with. Um, feel free to stick your questions into that. There's a few coming in there already. So if you have something in particular that you want to ask, um, that's a great way of getting that, that answer for yourself. Okay, thanks. On, on to you there, Ray. Yeah, very good. Uh, thanks very much, Fran. Can you see my presentation there? That's grand. Thanks, very, Ray. Very good. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you, Fran, and uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Raymond Burke, and uh, I work in the Integrated Controls Division in Port Leash. Uh, the Integrated Controls Division has responsibility for the carrying out the inspections part of uh, the Young Farmers Scheme. Um, this evening's presentation, I'm going to go through uh, some of the inspection process and also the key requirements for the scheme. Okay. So, so the young farmer. So on this evening's presentation, I'm going to cover. Um, so just going to recap on some of this, some of the scheme eligibility requirements that uh, Eddie covered a few moments ago. Um, I go through the YFS young farmer scheme ins inspection process, uh, managerial and financial control, some of the common uh, non-compliances uh, we come across at inspection. And I go through the post inspection process, and then I cover uh, how young farmers uh, can prepare for the inspection, what they need to uh, cover to, to, to make themselves eligible at inspection. So as I say, uh, the scheme eligibility requirements, uh, as Eddie has, uh, has already covered this in his presentation. Um, so the, the young farmer must have submitted a valid uh, 2022 BPS application as of the 16th of May 2022 under a herd number on which the applicant is included. Uh, the young farmer must be aged no more than 40 years of age at any time during the calendar year in which she or he uh, first submits an application under the BPS. Uh, they must have successfully completed a recognized course uh, of education in agriculture giving rise to an award at a PTAC level six or its equivalent, again, by the 16th of May, 2022. And it must be setting up as the head of an agricultural holding for the first time, or has set up uh, such a holding during the five years uh, preceding the first submission of the BPS application. Moving along then to the, the inspection process. So uh, the inspection is, is conducted in two parts. Uh, part one is the, is the land eligibility inspection requirement as described in the, the, the basic payment scheme uh, terms and conditions. And then part two then is, uh, is the interview or is the, examines the compliance with the young farmer scheme uh, as, as outlined in the, the, the the Young Farmer Scheme Terms and Conditions for 2022. So part two is the interview uh, conducted on farm with the young farmer. So part one then is, is the land eligibility inspection. Uh, this is where uh, the, the land uh, is inspected either by remote sensing or by ground inspection. Um, it's to check and see if the land is eligible for BPS uh, for the NC or, or and the Young Farmer Scheme. This inspection is carried out in the scheme year uh, 2022, so it would have been carried out uh, uh, during, the, during, the, during this current year. The agricultural, it must be an agricultural area, so that means the land which is available uh, must be suitable for agricultural production, and the vegetation must be grazable, and there also must be evidence of an agricultural activity on the parcel.
So then the part two then is the interview. Is the, this is examines uh, compliance with the Young Farmer Scheme for 2022 as outlined in the Young Farmer Scheme uh, terms conditions. And uh, just note that the, these terms conditions are available on the, the department website. So the interview uh, is carried out on farm with the young farmer. And this is to, to establish that the young farmer is in both uh, managerial and financial control of the holding. So man managerial control uh, established by the interview. This examines the young farmer's knowledge of the farming operations, of the day-to-day -day knowledge of the, of the farm. Uh, and as I said, the interview is carried out uh, with the young farmer solely. In terms of financial control, uh, this is a check to see if the financial operations are conducted through a bank account under the control of the young farmer and either solely or jointly. Uh, so if the young farmer is, 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 uh, is part of a group, if it's jointly. So invoices, receipts and bank accounts uh, used for all transactions must uh, contain the young farmer's name. So part two inspection, uh, the, the inspection is announced uh, and it's up to 48 hours notice. Um, when an inspection is announced, uh, the young farmer is advised of the procedures involved and uh, the process, uh, uh, the process, the inspection will, will, will take uh, the outline of the interview and to give a guide as to the documentation that will be required at inspection. So the inspection rate, uh, it's normally uh, five percent as per EU regulation, but this has increased to ten percent since 2020 um, as per EU regulation, and due to the the, the increase in the failure rate uh, over the last uh, number of years. A managerial control check. Uh, so this is uh, established in 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 the interview with the young farmer. Uh, this is the check. This is it. Is on, on the knowledge of all farming enterprises, and the interview is based on a standard list of questions. So, any questions asked uh, to the young farmer, uh, these will all re relate to the scheme year of 2022. Um, they explore the knowledge of the day to day farming operations, and these questions are on documented facts so that validation is possible. So, the inspector will have um, uh, done his homework. Uh, uh, pre-inspection in terms of what questions to ask uh, at inspection. So generally there will be five to six questions um, per enterprise uh, depending on the enterprises on the farm. So the key message here is that the young farmer must demonstrate knowledge for all farming enterprises on the farm. The financial control check so this is a document check to establish that the young farmer is in financial control. So there'll be an examination of a number of receipts and invoices for farm enterprises. Uh, a specific sample of transactions will be checked for each enterprise. For example, if the, if the enterprise in the farm is dairying, there will be a number of the milk sales for X months uh, checked to see that the, the, young, the, the, the transactions are following through into the young farmer's bank account. Also maybe a number of uh, cattle sales or purchases will be checked and documentary evidence will, will be required. And uh, the bank account statements um, for, for accounts uh, must be under the control of the young farmer. So any bank accounts, they should be, have the name of the young farmer on them uh, or the young farmer should be in control. And this can be either solely or jointly, depending on the type of holding. Uh, so showing transactions for the sales or purchases. And we will also accept um, uh, milk and grain uh, contra uh, agreements. This will also be uh, accepted in terms of the uh, financial documentation or transactions. And at all times, uh, they must uh, contain the name of the young farmer. So the key message here is that the young farmer must demonstrate financial control for all the farming enterprises and that the, the transactions must follow through to, to a bank account which, which will be under the name of the young farmer. 
or include the name of the young farmer. So continuing along with the documentation checks, uh, so ch checks on transactions for 22 uh, scheme year only. Uh, this would include checks for department payments, which would be either agriculture or forestry. Uh, checked documents are photocopied or, 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 or photographed on farm. Um, we will only be taking a photograph of the necessary information. We will be um, excluding any other information uh, on these uh, documents. And then if, if documentation is not available on day of inspection, the inspector issues a document uh, request letter. So this will uh, list the documents to be provided by the applicant, and the applicant will be allowed 14 days uh, to forward these documents. And if the required documents are not received, uh, the young farmer will be deemed ineligible for payment. And uh, the check documents are retained on file by the department. So moving along then to some common non-compliances that uh, we've come across at inspection uh, over the last number of years. So the first one is uh, failure to demonstrate managerial control. So where, this is where the applicant has insufficient knowledge of the farming operations. Uh, the applicant does not maybe show up for the interview. Uh, they're not uh, fully tuned in with what uh, the data they're running at the farm is. Uh, they're not able to answer or validate some of the questions which the inspector puts in front of them. Uh, failure to demonstrate financial control. So the department cannot trace financial transactions through a bank account under the control of the young farmer. So this is where uh, different accounts are being used uh, to lodge um, transactions, uh, uh, maybe from the sales or purchases of animals, or maybe where the, 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 milk, the milk check is lodged into a, uh, an, an account which is not under the control of the young farmer or where the young farmer is not named on that account. Uh, for sole operators, um, we, we found that the bank account is under the control of the young farmer plus another farmer. So uh, again, this is not allowed where um, the other name on the bank account is for another farmer, is for another person farming on their own right. Then in terms of partnerships, um, a bank account under the control of the young farmer plus uh, partners plus another farmer not involved in the partnership. So the farmer that is uh, not involved in the partnership should not be named on this bank account. Uh, all um, uh, lodgements should go through to the partnership bank account, which names all partners in that bank account, in that uh, partnership. So the post inspection process then. So if the young farmer is deemed eligible uh, at, ins at inspection, uh, then they're they're cleared for payment. They receive the top up payment. And if the young farmer is deemed ineligible, um, there'll be an issue with a, with a control report letter. So the control report letter pro provides the reasons for in in ineligibility for payment. So this may be uh, one of the following reasons, following reasons, failure to demonstrate managerial control, a failure to demonstrate financial control, failure to provide uh, requested documentation, or does not show up for the interview, or maybe has decided to withdraw from the scheme. Um, the applicant will be provided with 14 days to respond to the control report. Response to the control report. If the young farmer doesn't respond or the young farmer accepts the control report, uh, then the formal notice will be issued, issued which will uh, deemed that the young farmer is ineligible for the top-up payment. Any new documentation or information submitted uh, by the young farmer is considered, and th this may lead to two options. Uh, the documentation sent in by the young farmer, uh, the young farmer may, may be deemed eligible for payment um, if, the document, if the documentation is accepted, the young farmer is cleared for payment, or if the documentation is not accepted, or the young farmer is deemed ineligible. And in this case, again, a formal notice will be issued. So the formal notice sets out the reasons for being 
deemed ineligible and uh, the applicant is provided uh, uh, with 28 days to seek a review by a district inspector. So once the, 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 final, the formal notice is issued, the, the young farmer can request uh, a DI review, a district inspector review within 28 days. In terms of the young farmers scheme inspection preparation, um, what young farmers can do to prepare for inspection. So in terms of man management control, they must be familiar with all enterprises on the farm. For financial control, ensure that all farm business financial transactions are through a bank account under the control of the young farmer. So for a sole operator, the bank account must be under the control of the young farmer. Uh, the financial transactions for a young farmer in a group. So for a say for a company, all the transactions are in the company bank account. And the partnership, all the financial transactions are through the partnership bank account, uh, generally um, with all the members named on the partnership bank account. And then the, the joint, in the case of the joint, all through a bank account under control of the young farmer, either solely or jointly. So in all cases, um, another name on the, bank, on the bank account cannot be a separate farmer. And if a young farmer has a signatory on a bank account, it's not acceptable. So in terms of being uh, for YSPS compliance, um, compliance with the scheme requirements is outlined in the young farmer scheme terms and conditions. If you refer to section 1.6, this goes through the requirements at inspection. It goes through in terms of managerial control for sole operators and young farmers in a group um, involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, farming operations. And they must be familiar with all uh, farming enterprises on the farm. Then in terms of financial control, either for sole operators uh, and young farmers in a group, it's important that the, the financial transactions are through a bank account under the control of the young farmer and this would be for both sales and purchases and this would include the any department payments would uh, be transacted to a bank account under the young under the control of the young farmer which also which also would include uh, forestry payments so that's a whistle stop tour there of the uh, young farmer scheme in terms of the inspections point of view um, thanks for your attention and if there's any queries uh, either tonight or in the coming days, uh, there's an email address there, you can send them through to uh, yfsinspections at uh, agriculture.gov.ie. Uh, thank you very much and I'll hand you back to, uh, to Fran. Thanks a million, Ray. Much, much obliged to you for that. Um, so we, we've quite a few questions in, um, but we have space for more. So. Feel free to use the questions and answers box down um, on the software there to, to throw your questions through to us. Um, I'll welcome back the panelists now so that um, we can start to, to dole out some of those questions uh, and get your answers so that you, you, you get the information that you need to know. Um, just before, while we're getting ready for that, while we, while we prepare for that, um, I do, there are a few questions in there about 2023, um, so for, for what happens next year. So um, I might just go back and um, uh, do do a, a slide on that, if you bear with me for one moment. So hopefully at this point you can see uh, some information up there. Uh, someone hopefully will tell me if that's uh, if that's wrong. If it's uh, if you can't see that. So um, there will be a new young farmer scheme, a successor young farmer scheme in the new cap starting in January next year. And there's a new name on it. Uh, it's called the Complementary Income Support for Young Farmers. And uh, you'll be happy to know that the uh, amount of money that is dedicated to that um, is substantially increased from next year onwards. It will total some 3% of the complete direct payment ceiling. That means about 35 million annually for young farmers, for the young farmer scheme. It's really important to know that next year, 
from next year on, that's from 23 until 2027. Um, the payment, the top up, as you might have known it up until now, is no longer based on payment entitlements. It is not linked to payment entitlements at all. But it is on the eligible hectares you declare on your new BIS, or what, which is the successor to the BPS, your new BIS application next year. And that's subject to a maximum of 50 hectares. The other good news for you is that increased ceiling means increased payments. And we're estimating right now, um, and, and this is an estimate, it's not a, a, a perfect uh, number just yet, but we estimate that the new payment will be around 170 euro, there or thereabouts, per hectare. Um, and that's for up to five years. We will still continue with the five-year participation term. Now, the Commission have told us that there's no guarantee of anything beyond 2027. That's just because the new cap period ends in 2027. But it's hard to see that there wouldn't be um, generational renewal supports beyond that time. But we cannot make a promise beyond 2027 at this point. And the other news is that existing applicants can roll over for the rest of their five years. So if you started as in, in the scheme in 2021, say for example, and you had received your payment in 21, of 68 euro odd per entitlement. And in 2022, you received another 68 euro per entitlement. Imagine that was happening this year. In For next year, you can roll on into the new scheme and you will benefit from the higher rate, but per hectare rather than per entitlement from next year onwards. So it's quite significant supports there and quite a significant increase in supports next year. Now we'll go through some of the questions um, after um, uh, now straight away after this. So um, again, I'd say to you, if there's something that you feel we haven't covered or something that you want to ask for you, um, please do add that in there to the questions and answers box. So I might start with the first one. I think this will probably go to you, Eddie, first. Um, and there's quite a few questions on this particular topic. So uh, I'll read this out to you. I'm 39 years of age and I turned 40 on the 31st of August, 2023. I'm currently studying for the Green Cert and that will be completed by May of next year. Um, I've been left land, I've been left a, a farm and I'll be applying for the herd number in the coming weeks. And I'm wondering, can I still benefit from the scheme when it comes around next year? Okay. Um... Uh, firstly, on the age, um, the requirement is that you are no more than 40 in the year of your first application under the scheme. So in that year, say in 2023, if you reach the age of 40 at any time from the 1st of January up to and including the 31st of December of that year, you meet the eligibility requirements with regard to uh, age. So. Uh, for 2023 in the situation you outlined that would be uh, that would be okay on the educational qualification it just mentions that it will be completed in may now the educational qualification has to be fully completed by the closing date for receipt of applications under the scheme now that is all aspects of it done all coursework all practicals everything done it doesn't have to be uh, the exams and so on don't have to be corrected and the results don't have to be confirmed by that date, but all the coursework has to be completed by that date. And in that situation, as part of the online application system, there is a form that you complete in conjunction with your course provider. And that states that you have completed all aspects of the course by the required date. And that is a placeholder then and as soon as the uh, transcript of results is made available to you or the certificate has been awarded to you, you send that in to us and we can finalise your application from that point of view. So I hope that addresses uh, those uh, those questions that were raised on that, that particular point. So I could, if I was a young farmer, um, I could turn 40 on the 1st of January 2023 and I would still be eligible within 2023. Yeah, okay. That is correct. And, and 
once all my coursework is done, I'm finished all of the classes, um, any of the practicals, I've, um, I've done all that stuff. Once that is all done by the closing date, which I think is the 16th of May next year, if I'm, if I'm correct on that, then that is okay. Even though I wouldn't have my graduation and my certificate yet at that point, that wouldn't come till November. I'm still okay to apply next year. That is correct. Uh, subject to a successful outcome from the uh, you know, the correction of the exams and so on. Uh, yeah. Grand, grand, grand. Okay, okay. Um, next question I have here, and this probably goes to to Stephen or, or Ray. Um, um, so this time last year, I joined the herd number with my father because we were going to go into a registered partnership in twenty two. However, we never went through with the partnership and he is to transfer the farm to me in line for 23. Um, and maybe actually this is an Eddie question. Will I have lost a year on the Young Farmer Scheme by being on the herd number last year or can I start from scratch? That's actually probably an Eddie question, I would say. Yeah. Uh, again, it, once your first application under the scheme is submitted within five years of your commencement of agriculture, you will be eligible to receive payment for the full five years. So, for example, if you uh, if, if you commence an agriculture, if you join the herd number, or got a herd number in your own name, or so on, say in 2019 or 2020, that will not prevent you from submitting a first application in say 2023 and availing of the payment in each year from 2023 to 2027 to complete five years of payment. Okay, thanks, Eddie. So, next question: um, If I'm part of a company or partnership, how does the young farmer demonstrate that they are in receipt of payments, which would normally be lodged into the company or the partnership account? So, that's probably a Ray question, I would say. Yeah. So, I'll say as I covered there in the presentation, uh, Fran, at inspection. Um, for someone that's involved in a company or a partnership, we will be checking to see that the financial transactions or documentation is uh, transacting through to a, a, a bank account under the control of the young farmer or under a bank, a bank account with the name of the young farmer on it. So, um, at inspection, that is what we're looking for to see that the yeah that the name of the, of the young farmer is on the young farmer bank or on the company bank account or on the partnership bank account. And, and another question on this, for a company, does the young farmer have to be the herd keeper? Yeah, well, um, I suppose we would hope that the young farmer would be the herd keeper. Um, I suppose in, in terms of we're looking for, for the young farmer, we're, we're trying to establish that they're in manage, both managerial and financial control of the, of the holding. So uh, in order for the young farmer to be familiar with all the enterprises on the farm, um, they would be required to be the, the, the herd keeper, um, to be familiar with all the, the data runs of the farm. Um, so yes, uh, we would we would require that the young farmer would be the would be the herd keeper. Okay, uh, question for Eddie. Um, when do we get contacted to provide the birth cert? And I suppose you could group into that any other documentation that might be needed as well. Yeah, uh, the birth cert and any other supporting documents are requested at the time of application. It's an online application system, and you are required to upload that, uh, those documents at that time. If you are a single herd owner, you're the sole name on the, herd, on the herd number, we already have your date of birth because it was registered uh, when you were assigned that, that herd number, so we don't require a check there. Where we require the birth certificate, is where the young farmer is operating in a group situation, such as a joint herd, registered farm partnership, or a company. And as part of the online application system, you will be prompted to upload uh, a copy of your birth certificate at, at that point, along with the young farmer scheme declaration and your education certificate and any other supporting documents that may be required uh, in, in support of the application. Okay, uh, another question back, um, I think for Ray probably. Um, what is deemed suitable agricultural land for the scheme? 
Um, so, as, as it, um, currently, um, the scheme is, is based on the, the you apply under the entitlement, so up, up to max of 50, 50 entitlements, so it's, it's one entitlement per hectare. So, we require that the, it is an eligible hectare. So, there must be agricultural activity on, on the parcel. Um, must be uh, also it must be agricultural area, and uh, the and the vegetation on the parcel must be grazeable. So, um, th this is carried out in the Part One inspection, the land eligibility inspection. Um, so all those things would be required uh, in order for the land to be eligible. So it's not like that. There's a special class of land that can only you can only apply for this on the very best of land or the very worst of land. Once it's it's eligible and it is under normal agriculture, normal agricultural activity on it, then you're okay. That's exactly okay. it, Fran, yeah. Okay, a couple of other questions I'll take um, on that. So when can we expect to get terms and conditions for next year, for 2023? So you'll have those in time for the scheme opening next year. So they, they will go, they will be there with the application process for next year, which by the way, will probably be towards the end of, probably the end of February, I would say, early March, around that time, which is the usual time when all those online systems open. Um, it'll be around that time, there or thereabouts. Another question that's there is um, on the rates for next year. Is it €170 Euro per hectare per year, or is it €170 Euro per hectare um, over the five years? So it's €170 Euro per hectare per year subject to a maximum of 50 hectares. So 50 by 170 for each of five years would be the maximum that's, that you could obtain. Another question that's there, are payments higher for disadvantaged areas? No, they're not. It's one rate of payment across all the country, no matter whether you're in, um, whether you're in A and C or not. It's the, the same rate. Um, Next question I have, um, again, probably an Eddie question. What's the deadline for applications in 2023? Uh, the deadline uh, is expected to be the 16th of May. Uh, and I think that is the deadline for the direct payment measures, such as the new uh, basic in income support for sustainability and the other direct payments associated with that. So the National Reserve and the Young Farmer Scheme uh, which are on the same application uh, platform, we'll have a closing date alongside those, 16th of May. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Eddie. Okay, so um, uh, the next question I have here, how many years can you apply for the Young Farmer Scheme? Again, Eddie, Again, I think that is. Yes, um, it's a maximum of five years. Uh, you have to apply each year. It's an annual scheme requiring the submission of an application each year. In your first year of application, you submitted using the online Young Farmer Scheme application facility on agfood.ie or on INET. And in the following years, uh, you should have the option to just click the button on your BIS application for continued participation in the scheme. And that is deemed to be your application for that year. If you're eligible and that option is not available to you for any particular reason, such as if you make a change to your herd number between uh, the years, you go back and you submit that application again through the online no farmer scheme uh, application facility. So it is for a maximum of five years and it requires the submission of an application on an annual basis. Okay, um, I, I, thanks Eddie. Uh, another question, there's a, there's a few questions there between people um, where they are sort of confusing the Young Farmer Scheme and the National Reserve. So maybe you just take us through just briefly what you know the differences are between the two things um, and outline that they're completely separate entities. Yeah. There are two separate schemes. Sometimes uh, there can be some confusion uh, around them. I say since 2015, we have had a National Reserve operating uh, separately to the Young Farmer Scheme. So the National Reserve has two priority categories. 
one of them is young farmer and the other is new entrant. The National Reserve provides an allocation of payment entitlements to a successful applicant on land for which they hold no payment entitlements. And if they hold payment entitlements that are below the national average level, a successful applicant can have those entitlements brought up to the national average level. And the allocation of entitlements is it's a permanent allocation uh, from a from a once-off application that, that is submitted. Young farmer scheme, different in that it is paid based on activated entitlements subject to a maximum of 50 and it is paid for the maximum of five years. So from 2023, uh, we've outlined really what will, will happen with the Young Farmer Scheme rolling over to become the complementary income support for young farmers and the applicants having the option to roll across into the new scheme for the remainder of their five-year term of eligibility. But running alongside that from 2023, there is a new national reserve, which again has two priority categories. Uh, the first one is uh, young farmer, and the second one is now called new farmer. Young farmer has the same eligibility criteria in terms of age and commencement date and so on uh, as the complementary income support has. And again, the National Reserve from 2023 uh, for both categories will provide uh, an allocation of payment entitlements on land that is el eligible land on which the applicant holds no entitlements and uh, the entitlements below the national average can be topped up to the national average level. Uh, a new farmer is essentially defined as somebody who has commenced uh, farming within the previous three years and they have never had any agricultural activity in their own name or at their own risk at any time prior to that. So they're brand new into the business within the previous three years and there is no age limit attaching to the uh, new farmer. And then again, for both reserve and for the uh, young farmer, uh, complementary support for young farmers, the educational requirement is there at level six uh, or equivalent. Uh, so that's essentially the, the distinction. One is a, a one-stop application, which provides an allocation of entitlements. And the other is a separate payment which is made uh, from 2023 on a per hectare basis for a maximum of five years. So, so someone who's a young farmer, they could, in, the, in their first year, in theory at least anyway, if I was a young farmer and I was starting next year and I had my green cert and I met all the criteria, I could apply to the reserve to get entitlements. And that was a once-off gift of entitlements, if you like. And then separate to that, I could also start on my five years of the young farmer scheme. So two separate things, but I could get them concurrently. That is correct. And the allocation of entitlements that you get from the National Reserve, uh, as I said, it's a, a permanent allocation of entitlements. And as long as you go forward uh, uh, year after year uh, into the new BIS scheme, which replaces BPS, as long as you hold one eligible hectare, for each of those entitlements that you hold, you can draw down the BIS payment on those uh, for the duration of the of the of the new scheme, and alongside that, or on top of that, again, you can draw down the Young Farmer Scheme payment. Okay, great stuff. Okay, thanks, thanks, Eddie. Um, I have a couple of land and eligibility questions for for Ray and Co. So. Um, I might start though with one. Is it advisable to engage to engage a farm advisor to help with your YFS application? That's you're back to me, um, Fran. Is it back to you, Ray? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as was from from experience, we we would have found that it was that the advisors do generally get the 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 job of uh, helping young farmers out with the application. Um, but I think um, I, I'd imagine most young farmers would be able to carry out the application on their own. Uh, um, it's fairly self-explanatory as, as regards to the requirements, and I think Eddie went through it in detail there from an, an admin point of view what's required. Um, and it's also available on, on the BPS application in terms of a, um, a tick box. Um, so 
suppose in the long and the short of it is, I suppose, you know, the consultants are not really re required um, to help out the young farmers, but... Um, they're, 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 but they're not mandatory, but it is optional. I suppose optional. In, a, in a lot of cases, you'd have people who would be starting off and maybe a father or mother have um, already have an advisor and the young farmer might then go to that advisor to start off with anyway. I suppose that's a common enough thing, really, isn't it? It'd be a, something like uh, three quarters of all farmers use advisors anyway. So that's probably the most common way that, that a young farmer gets in contact with an advisor. Yeah, generally, I suppose, as you said, the, the family would have a consultant or an advisor, and uh, um, I suppose the advisors t tend to be up to, up to speed with the requirements, and uh, just in case the young farmer maybe missed out on some, some part of the application, uh, They'd rather that a, an advisor or a consultant might do it for them, but it's it's not mandatory. Mandatory. Okay. Um. Back to the land question. So, is is it two two questions that have popped up now and again. One is is commonage eligible, and number two is is forestry, um, eligible. Uh, yes. So I think you covered this earlier, Fran. So yeah. Um. There's no specific land land classes. Um. Commonage land is eligible. As long as there is an agricultural activity, the land is eligible. Um, it's suitable for agricultural production. It is an agricultural area, and that the land is claimed on the BPS application. And the same for forestry. Um, uh, from a, uh, as long as the the would affect from 2009 that the la eligible la land was declared on a on, on the single payment scheme or the SPS scheme back then. Um, uh, it is um, still eligible for the uh, under BPS, so it is uh, eligible land. If, if, as I say, if, since if if it was applied on up to 2008 and it was a forested uh, into 2009 to uh, 2020, um, this land is eligible for BPS. So this land is eligible for a uh, young farmer scheme. Okay. Um, another couple of questions. Um, Will there be an off-farm income limit for the National Reserve? Um, so, um, for from next year onwards, there will not be an income limit when you're applying to the National Reserve. There will be an allocation limit, so the maximum number of entitlements that you can receive from the Reserve will be 50. So that will be in line with the maximum number of hectares in the Young Farmer Scheme also, which is set at 50 from next year onwards. So just to to, uh, to answer that question. Um, Eddie? And we might just confirm there on that one uh, before we move on that there's no off-farm income limit on the complementary income support for young farmers, and there has never been one on the Young Farmer Scheme. The off-farm income limit applied solely to the National Reserve uh, up to 2021, uh, but it will not apply from 2023 on under, under the new schemes what well, there never uh, there has never been and there's no plans to introduce an off farm income limit on the young farmer scheme or its successor the complementary income support for young farmers okay great thanks eddie um so a question for you um can you get the national reserve if you're in a partnership and there are already and there are already entitlements on the land If those entitlements are below the national average value, then if you're successful and you meet the eligibility criteria under the National Reserve, those entitlements can be topped up to the national uh, to the national average uh, level entitlement value. Uh, the only other way that you can have an allocation of entitlements to the National Reserve is if you have what's commonly referred to as naked land, that is land uh, for which you hold no entitlements. But if you hold existing entitlements, they would have to be below the national average level, and the National Reserve will then bring them up to the national average uh, level for you. Um, another question, if I benefited from either the Young Farmer Scheme or the Reserve before, um, can, I, can I go again? Can I apply again? Uh, no is the answer for the National Reserve. If you were a successful applicant under the National Reserve from 2015 to 2022, you were precluded from 
applying for the National Reserve from 2023 on. And if you're successful in, say, 2023 under the BIS National Reserve, you are then precluded from uh, benefiting from that reserve in any subsequent year up to 2027. On the Young Farmer Scheme side, if you're currently in the scheme, you will roll over into the new scheme. But if you had previously benefited from the uh, Young Farmer Scheme, let's say from 2015 to uh, to 2019, you will not meet the eligibility criteria with regard to commencement date. You will not have commenced within five years of your first application under the new scheme. So you would fall down on uh, on that basis alone. Okay, a couple of questions on what is the national average? So that is the average payment entitlement value. So this year, that payment entitlement value, that average payment entitlement value, the entitlement is about 183 or 184 euro. And then most farmers, the vast majority of farmers will get their greening payment on top of that, which means that the average payment per hectare is about 260 euro. But next year, all of the uh, allocations for all of those schemes changes in the new cap. And we are expecting that the new average entitlement value next year will be somewhere around 150 to 155 euro, there or thereabouts. So there's a change in all of those schemes. And you know, you, for, for any of you out there who, who just beyond, I suppose tonight is very much focused on the young farmer scheme and we have reserve questions and so on as well, that's good. But there is a lot of information out and about there at the moment on the rest of the direct payments areas from next year onwards. Um, and we have been out before ourselves. There's plenty of information on both the department website. There's information on YouTube. Um, the Farmers Journal are running a series of seminars at the moment as well. There's there's one tomorrow night in Tume, um, and one next week in Coot Hill. And of course, the department will be out themselves again probably early in the new year um, with more information on that as well. So there's, there's quite a lot of information because of the change. There's a lot of information going around at the moment. Um, so it's just something to, to bear in mind. Um, okay, so a um, uh, couple, of, couple of questions. Um, if an existing partnership benefit from the Young Farmer Scheme, and now an additional young farmer joins the partnership. Can the partnership benefit again? So I'd say that's back to you, Eddie, I'd imagine. Yes, um, the young farmer scheme that is designed uh, to offset the costs uh, at the point of setup, and it's to offset those costs, uh, I think, for the, for the first five years. Is not intended to be an ongoing payment. And the European Commission have determined that the commencement date uh, to calculate your eligibility for the five years of payment, that is based on when the first young farmer joins the, uh, joins the group. So in that situation, the calculation of the five years payment is based on when the first young farmer joined. And if uh, any second or subsequent young farmer joins, uh, we have to look back at the commencement date of the first young farmer to calculate the five years. So that is the uh, European Commission uh, stance on that particular point. So I'm afraid uh, that would rule out uh, the situation that has been proposed there. Okay, uh, Ray, a question for you. As long as the young farmer is in control of the farm, does it matter what the enterprise type is? For example, if the farmer was contract rare in stock, there'd be movement and payment records, but no purchase records as such. As long as there's proof of farming activity and showing the young farmer is active, is that okay? Uh, yes, Fran. So we would look to see that the young farmer is control of the of the young hold of the holdings in terms of uh, um, managing the farm. And you mentioned there the the um, um, control uh, or contract rearing sorry yeah we would look into the this we, we look for that contract rearing agreement and uh, looked at the ins and outs of it and uh, we, would, we would look at a number of transactions to see um, uh, does, does everything add up and to see that the young farmer um, is in control 
of the holding and that the financial transactions are um, transacting through to a, a bank account in the young farmer's name. So, um, so we look at we would look at it from a number of uh, points of view. We'd have to dig a little deeper and uh, um, and see that the that the, 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 the sales and purchases and the transactions are are all going the, the correct way. So that that point about you know the young farmer being the risk taker, being the one that uh, bears the burden of that risk and also has the knowledge of managerial control. That really is the key point here. That is the thing that a young farmer, apart from wants to meet the basic eligibility criteria, that is the part here that, you know, if they if they show that, they meet that, they have the managerial control, they have the financial control, That's they don't need to worry about things much outside of that. Is that fair to say? Or is that too simplistic? Yeah, no, I think you've uh, you've hit on the head there, Fran. Yeah, that the young farmer seem to be in control of the holding. They're taking the risks um, uh, in terms of the financial uh, element of the farm, and that they they're seen to be in control, uh, and managing the farm. You know, they're that they're the two things we look for. So, yes, I agree with you. Okay, um, another question, uh, maybe ready to go your way. If I'm farming through a limited company, how long of a lease do I need on the land? Um, yeah, so I'll say that the term of the, the young farmer scheme is, is five years. Um, so uh, obviously the young farmer has to have a, a BPS application. So any land that they're leasing would have to be on the, the, the BPS uh, application. So I would imagine that the lease would need to be at least uh, for five years. Uh, um, that would be my understanding of it. And this my, my my other my colleagues want to come in on that there. Okay, so it's it's an annual scheme. So once they have the land declared on their BPS or their BIS application in that year, then that's okay. They are covered for that year. But they will still need to be able to say if they want to continue in the scheme in the subsequent year, they'll still need to be able to declare the land again the next year and so on. So they could have yeah, five yeah. one year leases, if you like, just just the same. Yeah, I suppose yeah. I was okay. thinking I was thinking that they're there for the five years, but you're correct in saying yes, it is an annual scheme, so maybe they might decide to play in the second. But yes, so it's a uh, it's on an annual basis, so the land would need to be on the BPS applica uh, application each year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, a question on qualifications, Eddie. Um, who will decide if an agricultural qualification is gained outside Ireland, and it, would it meet the Green Cert criteria? Okay. Of green cert criteria? Um, it's actually Chagas who make that determination. Um, Chagas have, have a statutory function. Uh, here it's set out in the Stamp Duties Consolidation Act 1999 and that they will make a determination on whether uh, an agricultural educational qualification meets the standard for young trained farmer. Uh, the qualifications that we use for young farmer support uh, measures uh, administered by the department is the same list uh, that's used by the Office of the Revenue Commissioners for uh, agri-taxation measures such as uh, stamp duty relief and so on. So they, within Chagas, uh, there is an area based in, in Grange, County Mead, uh, where they will uh, offer a letter of equivalence. So they will, uh, they will take the details of the qualification that's earned outside Ireland. They look at the, uh, you know, the, the component parts of that uh, qualification uh, and see if it actually matches up with the the requirements uh, for a level six qualification in Ireland, and then they will make a determination and provide you with a letter of equivalence, which you can then uh, submit as part of your application. Okay, th thanks, Eddie. Um, um, well, I don't want to dilute what we're talking about here tonight. I have a question here: Can I still apply for acres um, while applying for the National Reserve and Young Farmer Scheme? So the answer there is yes. Um, you meet all the criteria for acres, you can qualify there. And likewise, if you go on then next year um, and apply next year for either the Young Farmer Scheme or for an allocation from the reserve, yes, you, you can do that. Um, that that's true. Um, and the same goes, by the way, for, for
for some of the other schemes that there are as well. So for example, you could be in organics and apply for acres as well. So those, uh, I, I don't want to get in too much into acres and organics because I want to keep the focus here tonight on Young Farmer Scheme because so many people have joined us to hear about Young Farmer Scheme. But given that there's a related question, I thought it was well worth answering that. Um, okay, so um, we've probably come to um, a lot to the end of a lot of the questions. Quite a few of the questions, you know, they're, they're similar questions and they're, they're ones that we have answered before. Um, so um, one, one or two last questions. Um, back again, I think, to Ray. Um, can a young farmer employ um, a person on the farm to assist, like a farm hand or farm relief that can assist on the farm where the young farmer is currently working off farm? So can I employ someone to do work on the farm because I'm working off the farm if I was a young farmer? Is that possible uh, or not? Yes, that, that's possible. I don't, I don't see an issue with that yet. Uh, um, you have a labourer doing some of the work on the farm for, for you, but I suppose going back to the old story, as long as the young farmer is in uh, managerial, I suppose, and financial control of the holding, um, yeah, they can get in uh, as many labourers as they want to help out on the farm. Okay, okay, good, thanks. Okay, so, so again, we're emphasising again that that, you know, being uh, the, in managerial control of the farm, and being in financial control, that is key. Um, so we're just emphasizing that again. Okay, look, um, I wanted to finish up by thanking everybody um, for attending tonight. Um, there's been a great attendance. Um, I'm, I'm really glad to see that and I hope you found it useful tonight. Uh, we have recorded this webinar tonight and we intend loading it up to YouTube um, in the coming, probably within the next few days or so. Um, so if you miss something or there is something you want to check out, or maybe your internet dropped out for a bit or whatever, um, you'll be able to go back and revisit that again and be able to play it through. Um, so finally, um, just before we go, before we close for the evening, I'd like to thank my colleagues here tonight um, who, who came along to answer your questions and to do the presentations. So many thanks to you all for, for, for your efforts here tonight. Um, after that, I, I'd just like to wish you all well and um, wish you well in your applications to the scheme, both for this year and also for future years. And hopefully we'll meet as we go around and have um, some information sessions around the country over the next while. Thank you all and good evening to, your, to everyone.